Well, hello and welcome to the first of many Smite God highlights here on Realm. My name is Boo, and we're going to look at how to set the place alight with the Hindu God of Fire, Agni. Before jumping into Agni's skill set, it's important to know about his passive. His passive ability is called Combustion. After landing four successful basic attacks, Agni's body will light up in flames, and he will gain a buff. With this buff, Agni's next flame wave or rain fire will additionally set the enemies ablaze, applying a dot that ticks six times over the next three seconds. His first ability is called Noxious Fumes. Agni summons a cloud of gas on the ground that deals minor damage every second. Using any of Agni's other abilities within the area of effect, detonates the gas, causing all enemies standing within the AoE to be stunned. And in my opinion, the most effective way to activate this stun, firing the media and summoning the gas underneath the media before it hits the ground. Agni's stun is very versatile and it's useful for both setting up kills and for escaping danger. As I'm waiting for the gas to come off cooldown so I can finish this low health Ymir, I instead have to retreat from an ambushing Jibalonke, using the gas defensively to trip him up on the path of flames, setting up my next attack perfectly. After seeing how much damage my abilities are doing to him, I decide that I want to fight, as Jibalonke decides that he doesn't, and as he flees into the jungle, Noxious Fumes comes off cooldown. But this time, I can use my stun for initiation, as the media stun sets up the flame wave for the kill. Agni's second ability is called Flame Wave. Agni releases a wave of fire that scorches all enemies caught in its path, dealing moderate damage in a line in front of him. Remember that Flame Wave is one of Agni's two abilities that works with combustion, so if you have the time, make sure you get the passive prepared with auto attacks before you fire for some extra damage. Flame Wave is a fairly simple move in that it serves as a fairly strong nuke and is often a good finisher. However, it can sometimes prove difficult to hit, as you have to get very close to your enemy to land it, and it has a small delay before firing. It's often better to set it up with a stun. The most common situation for me is to initiate with a media stun and close in on them following up with Flame Wave, and this combo causes a huge burst of damage for anybody on the receiving end. This Sobek in particular, after a series of stuns, locked himself in place with his own Aegis Amulet in desperation as I finished him with Flame Wave. His third ability is called Path of Flames. Agni quickly dashes forward, leaving a trail of fire behind him. Any enemies caught in the trail are ignited and burned for ticking damage over the next two seconds. Having a dash in Smite is a gift, and Agni's dash is instant and covers great distance. Path of Flames is an excellent farming tool, but should be used carefully, as the dash is often much better utilized as an escape mechanic, and being caught out of position with your escape mechanic on cooldown, that's bad. But what's even better is if you can use your dash as an escape and as a fighting tool. In this case, one shot from Artemis will end me, but I position myself so that I can dash through her to my tower, stun, and kill. But if you're feeling particularly risky, remember that this dash covers such a large distance and that your noxious fumes ticks instantly that you can stop a recall from a mile away, and it might even pick you up an extra kill. Agni's ultimate ability is called Rain Fire. Every 20 seconds, Agni gains a flaming halo over his head. He can consume one of these halos to summon a giant meteor at his ground target location, causing high damage to all enemies caught in the radius. The maximum number of halos that Agni can store at any given time is three. Rain Fire is perhaps the best harass ability in the entire game. Firstly, it's free of charge and costs zero mana. Secondly, it's a huge AoE that can be delivered from a good safe distance. And lastly, it's availability. It cools down every 20 seconds and you can stock up to three at any given time. It's also important to note that alongside Flame Wave, this is Agni's other ability that procs combustion. So if you have the time, make sure you get a few auto attacks in before you fire a media for even more harass damage on the enemy god. And remember, it's a big media. Get some minions in that AoE too. Agni's kit as a whole makes him an invaluable member of any team, proficient in both laning phase and in mass teamfights. 
His meteors provide huge AoE damage and can be coupled with a big stun, where I'm able to knock out three people at once with each meteor in a tight zone like this. The dash grants him great utility and lets him chase down those who are escaping with very little health, with Flame Wave proving to be an excellent finishing move. And even after exhausting all of his burst for one huge team fight, new meteors are always cooling down in the background, allowing him to keep up the damage between short intervals. It's recommended that you buy some cooldown reduction to help him keep his abilities at the ready at all times, and as he's able to cover so many areas on the ground with his meteors and noxious fumes, Gem of Isolation is an excellent pick for Agni, granting him the ability to slow the enemy team frequently, which, needless to say, is an invaluable asset for teamfights. Thank you for watching this highlight for Agni, the God of Fire, and if there's a particular god you'd like me to highlight for another time, feel free to write it down below in the comments. The one with the most votes shall be the chosen one. Once again, I've been Boo, hope you enjoyed, thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.